Breaking bad news is one of the hardest things to do as a doctor, let alone in a medical school interview. Today I'm going to show you how to approach breaking bad news. Hi, I'm Shivan from MedicMind. I've taught thousands of students and breaking bad news is challenging and something that everyone finds very hard. But if you follow these tips, you'll be well prepared. If you have a question about breaking bad news, just drop us a message below. So here is a station that we gave to our medical students. Pause the video and have a go trying yourself. You've been looking after my son, Mohammed. Yes, I have. Um, so we've done, a, we came in uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, so what do you already know about your son's condition? I know that he is um, very ill and he's mm. been in hospital for quite a long time. Mm. So I don't think I've met you before, I met the other doctor. Who are you? Yeah, I'm mm. Jeff. I'm the consultant that's taking care of uh, your son okay. um, during his time here. Sure, mm. sure. Yeah, he's been very sick yeah. and very poorly. I feel really mm. bad and I'm really worried about his condition. Mm. SPIKES is a really useful acronym to use when breaking bad news. This is something that we discussed in one of our previous videos. Just to recap, SPIKES stands for setting, perception, invitation, knowledge, empathy, and then finally summary. Okay, so let's talk about setting and perception in this part of the video. So at the beginning, he doesn't actually introduce himself. So again, we can't really change the setting that we're in, but he doesn't introduce what his name is or what position he's in in the hospital. Now, with regards to perception, he does this really well. He actually asks the patient, patient's family member um, uh, what they know about the situation and that gives a really nice um, background to, to this answer. Okay, um, so what do you already know about what he has or what I know you that might expect to have? I know he has lung cancer and mm. I know that people die from lung cancer and mm. it's very serious so I'm yeah. really worried um, in case something might happen, like if he um, might die mm. or something like that. Yeah, so you already know some of the, the complications that might happen with lung cancer. Yeah. Um, so we've, you know, we've done a few tests on him and um, the results have come back and unfortunately they haven't been as positive as we'd have liked. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to, to have to say this. Uh, it seems as if um, your son's lung cancer might possibly be terminal. Terminal? And, yes. Uh, what, what does that So terminal might mean, as he said, you know, one of the complications that you know, he may not, may not survive lung cancer. Um, we're going to try and you know, give him as many treatments as he possibly can and go through all the options. Okay, so let's talk about invitation and knowledge. Now, a lot of students get a bit confused about what invitation means, but the basic behind it is that you should tell the patient or patient's family if they'd actually like to receive some information now, and if they would like certain family members to maybe come um, so that they can listen in as well. So this is something the candidate doesn't do very well because they didn't actually ask the pa patient's family member whether they actually wanted to receive this information. So one thing the candidate does really well here is they give a little bit of a warning before they break the bad news. And at least this gives the patient's family member a bit of time to actually realize that this isn't going to be something great. And at least they can adjust mentally to this. So an example of this is saying that, well, the results don't look very good or don't look too good. Um, at least that way you're giving the patient uh, or the patient's family member a bit of a background with regards to whether this is positive or negative news. One thing the candidate could do to improve their answer is to maybe not use medical jargon like the word terminal and actually use simple terms that the patient or the patient's family will understand. Um, I'm very sorry Mr. Mr. Ahmed. Um, if there's anything that we can do, uh, I understand that you're going to, it must be very difficult and it's a very difficult situation. If there's anything that we can do. So this is a really, really challenging situation for a candidate to be in when a patient is getting upset and potentially crying in front of you. So what they do well is they are very apologetic. Maybe they could offer them a tissue or, or maybe offer them some support in that sense. Um, but one thing they could have done is maybe give the patient a bit more time. So actually let them, if they, if they are crying, maybe let them cry for a bit longer and actually um, get all their emotions out all at once. One big tip from official examiners is that you shouldn't be scared of silence. So even if there are two to five seconds of pure silence, don't be scared of that and don't try and break that silence because sometimes that is really important for the patient or the patient's family to actually have some time to process the information. How long, how long does he have? So we're not, we're not sure yet. We're gonna have to do some more tests to, to really confirm this, but 
If there's anything that you know, any questions you'd like to ask, I understand this is a very difficult time for you. So if there's anything that we why why him? Why not do, anyone else? I'm sorry, this is you know, this is something that you know it's very unfortunate to happen. Um, and we're you know, currently under the investigation, so you know, that's the best course of action. Does he know already? So we haven't told him yet. Um, we're telling, telling you. Um, so you know, so we kind of devise some sort of plan of action or how we can kind of deal with this. But so one thing I've noticed that the candidate is starting to do is not actually be as empathetic as they were uh, slightly earlier on. Um, however, one thing that they do do quite well is they don't give a sense of false uh, reassurance. So they're not promising anything and they're not giving um, kind of fake information as well. So the last S in spikes is summary. So one thing that, uh, again, it's not really relevant in this situation, but there should be some sort of plan of action or a summary of, of what's going to happen next. Um, the interviewer isn't usually expecting you to do this, but actually this might give you extra points. So maybe think about giving a leaflet to the patient or actually explaining to them what the course of best action will be next. Overall, this candidate did well in this station. However, they could have shown a bit more empathy with regards to the tone that they were actually using. Um, they, good, they did use some good mannerisms and some good phrases, um, and they did use the important um, spikes approach as well. Please remember to let the patient speak. It's really important to actually ask questions to the patient or the patient's family. So ask them, how are you feeling right now? How has this made you feel? And, and actually get the patient or the patient's family members to open up to you. And actually, it means that you have to do less talking. Role play stations are always a nightmare. Whether it's breaking bad news or speaking to an angry patient, or explaining to your neighbor that you've broken their plant pot. To master all these types of role plays, check out our online course. Thank you very much for watching guys and please like and subscribe. Take care. Thanks for watching this video. Click below to subscribe and catch more of our videos. To watch our full online course and find out how you can enroll onto our award-winning program with personalized one-to-one -one tutoring, online weekly webinars and more, click here.